Hello everyone, hope you are learning well. So in this video, we'll discuss the last problem of lead code by weekly contest 94. It's a hard level problem. Um, I would say relatively tough than the other hard level problems. I'll, I'll give you the reason as well. Okay. Uh, because it is based on one of the, uh, I would say very popular concept. So if you're not familiar with that, probably you will be stuck in the solution. That's the main reason. So, but yeah, uh, the problem name is count anagrams. So you are given a string S containing one or more words. So every consecutive word, a uh, pair of words is separated by a single space. Okay. A string T is an anagram of S if the ith word of T is a permutation of the ith word of S. Okay. For example, ACBDEF is an anagram of ABCDEF. Why? Because consider the first word of this and first word of this. So these two are anagrams. Now what are anagrams? So suppose you pick some characters ABC. So for this set of characters, you rearrange it in any order. Whatever word you get is basically an anagram of this word. Or I would say whatever words you get by rearranging these characters in any order you want, all those set of words are anagrams of each other. That's the main concept. Like for example, A, B, C, A, C, B, uh, C, B, A, C, A, B, and all the six words that you get are basically, you'll get three factorial words, right? Six words. So all of them are anagrams. So this word is an anagram of this. Um, yeah, basically a permutation of this. Similarly, this is a permutation of this. But these these two words are not anagram because here we have D, E, F and you see A, D, C. So set of characters are different. So these are not valid combinations. So return the number of distinct anagrams of S. Since the answer may be very large, return it modulo 10 raised to the power 9 plus 7. Okay. So problem statement is pretty small, but the solution will be a little bit complex. I'll tell you why. Mathematically, it is uh, easy, but we'll go into the details. So what is the first point? First point is whatever a string you have, suppose this too hot. So to calculate the number of possibilities, simple stuff is if the number of possible arrangements of this is X and the number of possible arrangements of this is Y. So your answer will be X into Y. What I mean to say is, Consider each word individually because one word is not at all related to the other word because you need to consider the ith word of both these strings, right? So pick this word, see many how many see how many possible permutations of this word can be made. Suppose that is x and some number of permutations of the second word is y. So number of permutations of the third word is z. So what you will be doing? You'll do you'll be doing x into y into z and dot 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 dot, right? This is the first point, right? Now, if you are familiar with basic mathematics, so how do you find the number of possible permutations of this? So here we have two. Okay. So T comes one time and O comes two times, right? I need to find the number of possible arrangements of this. So what I'll do, what are the total number of characters here? Right. But what are the individual frequencies? So for T it's one. So one factorial into what about O? It is two factorial. This will be my answer. So three factorial is six divided by 1 into 2. So that is 3. So that means this 2 can have 3 permutations. Now what are those permutations? So it is T-O-O, O-T-O, O-O-T. You will not be able to get any other permutation, right? That is the first thing. What about hot? So hot is 3 words. Every word has a frequency of just 1. So what you will do? Total number of words is 3. What are the frequency of individual words? 1 factorial into 1 factorial into 1 factorial. So that is 6 divided by 1 into 1 into 1. So this is 6. So for this, I have 3 possibilities. For this, I have 6 possibilities. So 3 into 6 is the total number of possibilities. Hence, 18 is my answer. What about AA? So A has a frequency of 2. So the total number of characters I have is 2 factorial divided by what is the frequency of each character? There is only one character. The frequency of that character is 2, so 2 factorial. So answer will be 1 in this case, right? I hope this concept is clear, right? So this is basic mathematics. Now comes the question, we know how to calculate, what do we need to do? We know that. Now, how do we do that? That's the main question, right? So we know that here we need to find the factorials, right? Separate factorials. So what we can do? Uh, we, we can basically write a util utility function that pre-computes the factorial of how many numbers? 1 to 10 raised to power 5. Why? Because the length of the string can be 10 raised to power 5. So the maximum length of a, of a word can be 10 raised to power 5. So what I can do? I can pre-compute the factorial of these numbers. And how do I do that? Factorial of i, right, 
equals to factorial of i minus 1 into i and you keep on taking mod at every step so it will never overflow so i can do certain pre computations and this array will have my pre computed values right this is the first thing so what is the second thing so uh, if you are familiar with mod inverse modulo inverse okay i'll tell you what i'll tell you what it means so suppose you have two numbers a and b and you need to find something like this a plus b mod m so what happens you can do something like this a mod m plus b mod m total mod m right you can you can separate it and take individual mods and they take the final mod this will work right similarly you can do it for subtraction right you take a mod m plus b mod m sorry minus b mod m and just if the value since the value can become negative you just do plus m and then take total mod m right similarly you can do for multiplication a mod m into b mod m and then finally take mod m right this is the basic thing that you do but what do we need to find here we need to find that division we are doing performing division just see we are performing division here so whatever is this total value i need to find this value mod m so i cannot do something like this that a divided by b mod m cannot be written as a mod m divided by b mod m that is not at all possible right basic mathematics we can have go into the proofs but that is not the agenda of this video right so what do we do here you need to be familiar with some something called fermat theorem for fermat theorem right I have given you the name. You can go and read in detail. What it says is, right? Suppose you need to find a mod a divided by me mod m. What you can write here? You can write it something like this: a into b raised to power minus one mod mod m minus one. Right? This is something. What I have done? I have just raised it to minus one. Right? now it has become multiplication so what you can do you can do something like this i have just told you a mod a mod m into b raised to minus 1 mod m and then final mod m you can do it like this i have just told you here right now when you do this na so this is the first part and what about this one this is the second part so actually if you go into the details of the second part so this can be written uh, something like so this is b raised to power minus 1 mod m finally if you go into the details so this will be reduced to b raised to okay m minus 2 m minus 2 mod m i think this has become a little bit clumsy right so let me just erase it let me just erase it let me just erase it it will not become clear otherwise let me just write the final thing that i was telling you so this can be written something like what what i was writing i was writing a mod m first part the second part was b raised to power minus 1 mod m so if you go into the details of fermat theorem so this can be written as something like b raised to the power m minus 2 okay this is one thing mod m this has a detailed explanation i'll not go into this so what i mean to say is if you want to find a divided by b mod m so what you do you do a mod m into this value b raised to the power m minus 2 mod m simple stuff this is what we need to calculate right so this this is the crux of this problem right again there are certain details that b and p must be co co prime and all but but yeah i'm just telling you the gist okay so we need to find the uh, inverse inverse of this so how do we calculate the inverse that is what i've shown you here uh, i'm i'm doing the exactly same stuff that i'm telling you let's not go into the jargons so we'll be doing this and we'll be calculating the answer so let's see what i've done here and how i'm getting the answer so this is my main function i have my word i've split it based on the empty spaces so i get all the words okay 
I initialize my answer by one and I call the pre-compute function. Now I've shown you what is the pre-compute function. This pre-compute function is basically computing the factorial of all the numbers till 10 raised to the power 5. Some pre-computations, right? And taking a mod so that it doesn't overflow. Now what I do for each word, I told you, na, calculate the answer for each word individually and this just multiply it. So answer equals to answer into call a function that returns a value and take mod m at every step and then finally return that answer now come to the score function get count so here what i'm doing in get count i get a word i calculate the frequency of all the characters okay simple like for example hot so i calculate the frequency of all the characters so it becomes h1 o1 t1 okay now what will be my numerator so numerator will be total number of characters ka factorial so that is three factorial so what i've done from the pre-computed array that i had get the uh, factorial of three so factorial of word dot length mod m this is my numerator what will be my denominator denominator will be for all the other for all the characters what are the individual frequency take the multiplication of those factorials okay so i'm calculating the denominator individually and then i'll do the division okay so calculate the numerator calculate the whole denominator then take it okay so just see for all the 26 characters, if the frequency of the current character is greater than zero, that means that character is present in my string. So denominator equals to denominator into factorial of frequency of this character. Simple. And then take mod. So after this loop is over, I get my numerator, I get my denominator. So I need to find A divided by B mod M. Simple. So what I do? The exact stuff that I told you. There is a function mod inverse. In this I'll pass what what i need to pass b and m right b and m so i have passed b which is my denominator and the mod this will return me the value this final value what i'll do and then i'll then i'll simple do the returned value into the numerator this was my numerator and then return my answer now what does this function do modulo inverse let's go here so this modulo inverse basically calculates the gcd of the two given two numbers again this will be understood when we understand the fermat theorem so this is the function to calculate the gcd basic stuff if if the gcd if is not equal to one return minus one obviously this will not be the case in our in our case because uh, will will not be getting that okay because of co prime properties and all and then finally what you do you need to calculate b raised to power m minus two right so i have written a utility function so this what it does is it calculates x raised to y mod p so this is b raised to m minus 2 mod m so here i calculate the power and i return it how calculating a power itself is again a different topic to discuss but uh, basic stuff is you initialize your answer by one you do x equals to x mod p uh, right because again if if that is larger than p then we can start by taking the mod itself and then i use the binary representation of the of the of y and just calculate the mod right so and finally we get the answer and i return answer from here so i do it for all the words right there are a number of concepts in this problem that is i was saying it is relatively better than the other hard level problems that you get mathematically it is easy but when you code it you need to be familiar with a couple of concepts so that is why i was telling you okay so yeah that's it for this problem if you are still having some queries i highly encourage you to watch this video again because these concepts may be new for you and if you are not familiar with these concepts then probably solving this question will be will be hard okay so just watch this video in case still you have certain queries do let me know in the comment section also if you find this video useful please do like it uh, and in case the channel is useful to you please do subscribe to the channel and i'll see you in the next videos take care bye bye